Hi guys, my name is Rhiannon Payne and this is the first video in a new series for Feminspire.com where myself and the other editors on the site are going to let you guys get kind of a window into who we are and just allow you to get to know us a little better, um, communicate with you guys, and it should be really fun. But not so much fun today is the topic we're talking about, which is consent. And consent is super important. It's an issue that affects pretty much everyone. Actually, um, yeah, there's no one that it doesn't affect. So listen up. It took me the longest time to figure out what to talk about in my first video. And for inspiration, I decided to go on Tumblr because, you know, everyone on Tumblr is super funny and interesting and cool. So there must be something there to put in a video, right? So I logged on to the Feminspire Tumblr and I immediately knew what I wanted to talk about. Actually, no, what I needed to talk about. And as I said, that is the issue of consent. You know, no means no. Yes means yes. I don't know means no. I'm drunk means no. Maybe means no. I don't seem into it means no. Basically, don't try to pressure me into doing anything with my body that I don't seem comfortable with. Don't try and convince me to sleep with you. Don't try to convince me to let your penis get anywhere near me unless I explicitly and clearly say that yes, that is something I'm interested in doing. In the past week, a quote from an article that we published on Feminspire, written by my really good friend Jackie Klein, has gone what I guess is viral on Tumblr. Actually, I don't, honestly, I, I don't really know what it means to be viral on Tumblr. I don't really use it personally. I know I'm really not cool, but this quote has a whole lot of notes. As I sit here, it has well over 15,000 likes and reblogs, which is definitely way more than anything we've ever shared on Tumblr in the past. So I thought to myself, why this? Why is this particular quote resonating with so many people? I went to Jackie and I said, girl, can I please use your article as the main talking point for my video? And she said yes. So basically, in Jackie's article, she compares a situation that she observed at a summer camp between two young children with a situation of a sexual nature in which a woman's obvious discomfort and lack of consent is being totally ignored. So I'm going to go ahead and read you guys the quote that was reblogged so many times. An eight-year-old girl camper began swimming near the edge of the pool by me. She was a tiny girl with a bubbly personality, and she was very attached to me. Upon seeing us talking, the boy swam over and started chasing her around the water. It was clear from the way she was trying to get away from him and from her screeching that she wanted to be left alone. Her body language was tense and her demeanor should have shown him that she was uncomfortable. But if that wasn't enough of a clue, the stop, she yelled in protest, should have been enough for him to go away. That's when it really hit me how serious the situation was. I could immediately picture it escalating. I didn't see an 8-year-old girl and an 11-year-old boy anymore. I saw the two of them as fully grown and matured adults. The girl was still small and skinny, and the boy was large enough to overpower her with little effort. I could see her running away from him, trying to push off his advances in a more sexual situation, but him refusing to believe that she really wanted him to stop. I saw him ignoring her physical protests, right along with the verbal ones, convinced that she wanted him there. It horrified me. I reprimanded him immediately, insisting that when someone asks you to stop, it is important to listen. Almost seconds later, a male counselor, standing by the same section of the pool, told him not to listen to me, and to continue his pursuit of the little girl, despite her obvious protests. Here were two boys, roughly ten years apart in age, with the same views on women, that consent doesn't matter. It's not a generational thing. This mindset has clearly been ingrained into the public psyche from an early age. How often are we told not to take no for an answer? How often do we still ch see children pestering their parents about getting a new toy until they eventually give in? How often do we hear about a woman's whims coming with her menstrual cycle? How often do we see on television shows and in movies a woman changing her mind about a man who is persistent enough or who just proves himself worthy? The idea that a woman will change her mind is so ingrained that we can't always recognize it at first. Now, before we ever published this article on Feminspire and before it ever made it to Tumblr, Jackie had emailed me a draft of this article and I was absolutely blown away by her writing and by the topic, but I was also a little bit afraid. I thought, shit, there's going to be some assholes out there who are going to try and tear this apart. I published a lot of different things on Feminspire in the past, and when you do that for a while, you kind of get an idea of 
what is going to trigger negative comments and hate. And I was pleasantly, extremely pleasantly surprised by the reaction. Jackie's article on the site got nothing but positive comments in response. And then out of nowhere, 15,000 notes on Tumblr. And I thought, wow, this must really, really be striking a chord with people. I'm going to tell you why I think that is. We unfortunately live in a society where in the United States, one out of four women in college are the victims of rape or attempted rape. And that means that if you are college age, like I am, the chances that you know someone who is a victim of rape or attempted rape are impossibly high. And this hits home for a lot of people. It hits home every time they hear an ignorant comedian like Daniel Tosh tell a rape joke. It hits home every time a strange man leers at them on the street. It hits home all the time. It hits home because we live in a culture that seems to tolerate sexual harassment and which seems to tolerate the objectification of women's bodies and which seems to tolerate the trivialization of things like consent. And it is about time that we start trying to get to the root of these issues and figure out why they're happening and how we can stop them. There is definitely a boys will be boys flippant attitude that we show when kids do things like invade each other's personal space, when they throw mud or splash water or poke or touch or generally make each other uncomfortable and then get away with it. And it may seem innocent when they're 10 years old, but when a camp counselor says that it's okay for a boy to chase down a girl who doesn't want his attention, that is a message that is going to stick and grow in that child's mind. Just like any other important lesson, like don't cheat, or don't steal, or don't lie, or don't do drugs, or whatever it is that you want to teach your children, we need to be teaching kids from a young age that consent is important and that it matters. Instead of making rape jokes, we need to be educating, and we need to keep writing and reading and sharing and reblogging all of these great things about why consent matters so much. Thank you guys so much for watching and letting me just jump right in here. I know this topic is pretty heavy, but if you continue watching, we're going to be talking about a huge variety of topics here on the Feminspire.com YouTube channel. Um, anything from politics, social issues, women, women's rights, culture, fashion, beauty, books, food, movies, the media, basically anything you can fathom. And if you read Feminspire, then you probably have a pretty good idea of the stuff we're going to talk about here because it's the same stuff that we're going to be writing about on the site, except you get to look at our faces and hear our voices and interact with us a little bit more, which is exciting. And I can't wait to see where this goes. So now that I've talked a whole lot, I'm actually going to let you guys respond. Since this is our first video, I have a question for you all that's kind of general but pretty important. My question is, what issues are important in your life? What things do you want to see talked about more in the media and on Feminspire? And also, what issues do you think are kind of swept under the rug that need to really be brought into the spotlight more in the media? I am going to be reading all of the comments here. I'm going to be watching all of the video responses and definitely paying attention to your input and keeping it in mind when we do future videos and future articles for the site. And it's going to be pretty cool because this whole week we are going to be having a new video every day from one of the other editors here at Feminspire. So I can't wait for you to meet them all. They are beautiful and amazing, and I think you're gonna definitely love them. So subscribe to the channel and check out Feminspire.com if you haven't read it yet. It's a pretty great media source for women. We're pretty proud of what we've been doing over there. So thank you guys so much. This has been lots of fun, and I can't wait to keep doing this more. I'll see you next week. Bye! Don't know how to end this, okay.